hello everyone i am inian and uh, i'll be talking about progressive jpegs and http2 and how they sort of work really well together they are totally different technologies but uh, sort of play interplay very well when you use them together and just want to talk about that so a bit about myself uh, i like uh, web performance and web security i am working on a startup called dexsecure we uh, build tools to automate uh, speeding up of your websites so this actually uh, was some of the research that we did during uh, while working on this so i just wanted to talk about uh, progressive images first so let me just give you a brief introduction to what each thing is pro what progressive images are and what http2 is and then let's go on with the talk so the easiest way to explain this is actually with a video let me just say so the one you see over here is the progressively encoded image and one you see on the right is what you would see uh, normally it's called a baseline enco encoding so Uh, the, the difference, difference between, between both these images is that they look the same in the end, but when I reload both the pages together, you can see that the way that they load looks different. So here, uh, the size of the images are almost the same, but here the images, both the images are around say 40% loaded, 40-50% loaded. But here, what happens is that a lower quality version of the image is shown to the user first, and it's progressively enhanced. there uh, this is what you would see in most web pages when you open a web page and your internet connection is slow this is what you see in a uh, page right the images loads chunk by chunk so this is basically a different way of encoding images cool part about it is that it looks better even when part of the image is downloaded uh yeah so that's the one on one of that let me go to <coughs> uh so basically sequential images are the one you saw on that side it's uh, delivered top down uh, chunk by chunk progressive images are delivered scan by scan so it means what it means is that first a low quality scan is sent forward to the browser the browser decodes it and as it gets more and more information you start getting a better resolution of the image uh the cool part about progressive images is that most progressive images are equal uh, around 10% smaller than the equivalently encoded uh, baseline images which is cool so they they also look better but they are also some mostly smaller in size uh they are they are exactly the same so once both images have been uh, loaded you won't be able to tell a difference between which is progressive and which is uh, baseline encoded so it's a loss lossless transformation there are some caveats to it so uh, before you go ahead and implement uh, there are some things that you need to take care of uh, i've just mentioned two here uh, one is that it takes more time to decode so when you are sending these images to say low powered mobile devices you need to take care because the browser is actually decoding the every scan as it comes so it's more work for the browser and some older browsers don't understand this format it's still a jpeg it's a valid jpeg but uh, what happens to old ie browsers and stuff like that is that uh it, you get a much worse experience because the browser waits for all the data to come and then the boom the image comes like that so it's yeah be careful when you encode it i right, test this uh http2 so the brief introduction to http2 uh is that it's the next version of the transport protocol it's uh, the main difference between http2 and previous versions is that all requests and responses are sort of multiplexed in one single connection so in previously what used to happen is that there were uh, the browser used to have limits on how many connections can be open to a single domain so if you are say facebook.com at most six requests can go to facebook.com at a single time and then the next six used to go and then in the next six what's cool with http2 is that it's just one connection and it's all a binary format it uh, all requests and responses are interleaved into one single connection and uh, the it goes on from that uh, let me just show you some demos of how this works so yeah this is the standard demo that people show when to sh it's an exaggerated demo showing the power of http2 so uh, if the one is here is http1 that's http2 it's all mixed with uh yeah so this is you can see like uh, each image 
gets downloaded on HTTP 1 connection. It's uh, six requests go at the same time. So this is what it looks when there are a lot of image requests going on HTTP 1 connection. What happens here is that you see that a bunch of all the requests, almost all the requests go at the same time, and they sort of uh, are downloaded parallelly. So if you look at the waterfall diagram, this is how it looks like. So this is the standard. This is why it's called a waterfall. Uh, six, six requests at the same time go to the uh, server, and it gets downloaded like that. So this is the HTTP2. See, the, so many requests go at the same time to the server. So that's the brief gist of what HTTP2 does. Um, so yeah. So the basic idea is that why, how um, progressive images and HTTP2 are sort of linked together is that uh, let me just go to the demo. It's probably easier to show. So uh, this is a page, just simple page that I set up with like 10 images, all are uh, baseline encoded, and uh, the domain is served on a HTTP2 connection. So let me just clear the cache and reload the page. Can see that uh, can see how it loads uh, sequentially. So that's that's how it looks like when the images are sequentially encoded. Now uh, I'll show you the same demo, but with uh, progressive encoded. The images look exactly the same, but uh, when you encode progressively, what happens is that uh, you can see uh, this image is just probably like 20% or 30% downloaded, but uh, as the page loads, you are able to see much more of the image. So you don't see like strips everywhere. You get like low resolution pictures of the versions of the picture everywhere, and they are enhanced. So with HTTP2, it's all the more important that you encode your images in this way because uh, all the problem, the not the problem, the feature of HTTP2 is that all requests go at the same time. So each individual image is going to download slower because everyone, all these uh, 100 requests are going to compete for bandwidth. So uh, instead of showing uh, a version where, so this happened fast because this happened uh, sequentially. But yeah, that's the main difference. The main uh, thing is that half downloaded uh, progressive images look much better than half downloaded uh, sequential images. So that's the uh, basic thing. So I have also run a test to show the actual difference between both the pages. So the main thing that this optimizes for, uh, the load times and stuff might almost be the same because the size of the images are the same. But look at the visual progress. So you can see that with HTTP2, it's all the more important to encode your images like this because you can see it's consistently uh, higher than the other version. So uh, there is another feature of HTTP2 that you can take a uh, look at. Uh, it's much more advanced when it comes to images. So there's a feature called HTTP2 push. This means that typically what happens is that a browser sends a request and the server sends you a response, right? But in HTTP2, the server can say that, OK, I know you're going to need this response. Just take it. So the server can push uh, resources to the client even without the client asking it. So uh, typically, normally, what this is used for is like uh, if you know that a uh, new visitor is coming onto your site and uh, these are some uh, hidden uh, resources in your web page, for example, say your uh, AngularJS bundle loads an image, and the browser can't discover that image right up front. So it's probably if that image is important to your site, it, you can push it with your, say, JavaScript bundle. That's one example where HTTP2 push is used. But a cooler part where it can be used is that uh, I remember that I mentioned that uh, progressive images are delivered via scans. So you can uh, see if like some you have like two important hero images that you want to download. So you can uh, push these for the first scan layers of these two different images down to the client. So you have much more control over how the image loads, which part of the image loads, and so on. So these are the uh, some of the new things that you can take control to uh, make sure that your users get a good experience. So right now, uh, pushing of individual layers is supported only by very few servers. Uh, Shimmercat is example of one server which you can use to do that. Um, yeah, that's about it. So uh, you can play around with these two pages and see what's the difference between uh, the experience of using a normally encoded image and a progressive image, run different tests in different browsers, and see how it works. Um, any questions? Thank you. Thank you.
any drawback of HTTP two? Of push is it or HTTP two? So uh, okay, so for push the pro, uh, there are diff again it's not a silver bullet. You can't just uh, uh, push all the resources that you think the client might need. Uh, one reason is that. Uh, the client might already have it in his cache. So if you just say that, okay, I'm going to always push this image regardless of what happens, it's just wasted bandwidth. So uh, there are some solutions to get around this, uh, look up on cache digits, digests and so on. Uh, so the main thing is the, we still haven't figured out as an industry what exactly to push and when. Uh, it's uh, not exactly straightforward. You can't just codify it as a rule and say, okay, this is what you need to push. Uh, it depends on your application, measure, test, and see it on different devices. And this landscape is changing very fast, so keep testing in different browsers every month or so. Uh, like three, four months, Firefox implementation of HTTP2 was very bad, but now it's like better than Chrome and stuff like that. So just keep testing uh, before you just do it. Uh, that's there with any performance optimizations that you try to do. So the HTTP2 push is not that different. Okay, uh, thank you so much.